All right, now what you're gonna wanna know for the door sizes is how big to make the door. So let's start off by measuring this door. Now, it may seem really simple to most, to some, but the reality of measuring doors is actually not that simple. For two doors, it's harder. For one door, it is simple, but for two doors, it's a little difficult. So what we want to do is, for inset doors, take that dimension. That's 33 and 7 sixteenths wide. 33 and 7 sixteenths wide. So let's go ahead and write that down. Thirty-three and seven sixteenths wide minus. Now we're going to go ahead and subtract a sixteenth for the middle because that's the space we want in the middle minus a sixteenth for the left minus a sixteenth for the right. So essentially 3 sixteenths off of that dimension. And then we are going to divide by 2 because that will be two doors making up that space. Let's figure out what the height is. So the height of the door opening is 23 and 3 sixteenths. 23 and 3 sixteenths. So this one, we want to subtract only one eighth. 23 and 3 sixteenths minus one eighth. So that gives us the height and the width. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, this is the style, two of them. This is the rail top, this is the bottom rail, and this is the panel. So in my case, it's quarter inch panel, okay? And these are, for these particular doors, they're two and a quarter. Sometimes I make them two and a half. Um, sometimes I make them three, depending on what the customer wants, but generally speaking, they're two and a quarter. Now we have two doors, so they're going to be side by side, and to aid in the process of figuring out what you need, it's nice to draw these out. In this particular case, I need two sets of these, so there's actually going to be four total doors. So what I like to do is I like to just write down four like that. So I know I gotta make four of these guys. Okay, four total doors. Okay, now, so these are also two and a quarter. We don't need to write that down. I mean, we know it's two and a quarter, but we will. Just because. Okay, now remember that in every set of router bit sets for door making, uh, you've got rails and styles and the uh, panels and the tenons on these um, rails fit in a groove and that groove depth can vary. Sometimes they're 3 8 sometimes they're a little over 3 8 sometimes they're 7 16 In my case, they're just over 3 8 So when I add them together, it's 13 16 So on a normal door, the tenon would be um, three eighths plus a little extra. So if I go, if I draw this out so you can understand, I've got the detail. Okay, so this is essentially the detail of the profile that's um, the cope. And when you've got this detail, you can see that groove or that tongue right there 
See that? That tongue right there. That's what sticks in the groove. That is the depth we're talking about. So that is times two is 13 sixteenths because there's two of them, both sides of them. So what we want to do is figure out the overall width of these doors and height, and we can figure out the sizes of all those parts. So what we've got is, I like to use the calculator because it just makes it a little easier. I'm going to put it in just like I wrote it. 33 inch and 7 sixteenths. And we're going to subtract 1, 2, 3 sixteenths. So minus, minus 3 sixteenths. And that equals 33 and a quarter. We are going to divide that by 2. So we're going to hit divide it by 2. 16 and 5 eighths. You see that? So that means these doors, total width, 16 inches, 5 eighths. Okay. Now, we know that the rails and styles are all 2 and a quarter. So, we could go 16 and 5 eighths minus 2 and a quarter minus 2 and a quarter equals... So let's go 16 and 5 eighths minus 2 inches and 1 quarter equals minus 2 inch 1 quarter equals 12 and 1 eighth. Now, that's, that's this distance that's in between. Uh, styles. Now, that's not the distance we want. Remember, we've got this tongue that needs to go into the wood, so we have to add that back in. So what I like to do is add 13 sixteenths, or whatever that tongue depth is, times 2. Um, so that's 13. So we plus 13 sixteenths. And that equals... 12 and 15 sixteenths, okay? So 12 and 15 sixteenths is, in fact, this dimension that we need. So we need to cut one, two, three, four. Remember, we're doing eight. So we need eight of those. So eight at 12 and 15. And we need eight at whatever the height is, we know that is 23 and 3 sixteenths minus an eighth. So that's 23 and 1 sixteenth, right? So we know those. Now we've got to figure out the panel. So we want to do 4 at... The best way to figure out the panel is to do the exact same thing as we did for the rails, except now we're going to do it for the height. So we're actually going to take the height of the, the styles, which is 23 and 1 16th, and we're going to subtract 2 and a quarter, 2 and a quarter, and then we're going to add back in after we equal that out. So let's do that. 23 inches. 1 16th minus, so I'm just going to do 4 and a half since I know that equals 4 and a half, right? 4 inch 1 half equals, that's 18 and 9 16th. And we want to add back in that 13 16th plus 13 16th. So we want to add 13 16 that equals 19 and 3 eighths okay now here's the deal 19 and 3 eighths is the panel height maximum well i like to subtract 1 16th so we're going to subtract 16th from the height and the width this is a mdf panel so if it was a solid raised panel we would do a, an eighth inch all right so it's 19 and 3 eighths minus 
1 16th on the handy calculator. And I know we can do this on our heads, but I'm showing you guys. All right, so that is 19 and 5 sixteenths. And it is high, 19 and 5 sixteenths. But what's the width? The width is the width of the rail minus the sixteenth, right? So 12 and 15 sixteenths minus 1 sixteenth. So that is 12 and 7 eighths. So we've got 12 and 7 eighths by 19 and 5 sixteenths. Those are the panels, quarter inch. Okay. These are the styles. These are the rails. All right. So when it's all said and done, we have eight rails, eight styles, four panels. Okay. So that's how you figure this out. Now, obviously, when you are doing it, as long as I've been doing it, I can take these numbers and I can figure out, you, you can say, all right, my rails and styles are two and a half or uh, two and a quarter, so that's four and a half. I can, rather than adding that back in, I can just subtract 13 16 from that, right? From that, to, from four and a half. If I do that, I can put it in my calculator as a memory recall number, and I can just add it, you know, I can just add this number right back in, or I can just subtract 13 16 from four and a half. And when I do my initial math, rather than subtracting for the rails and styles and then adding back in, I could just take that result from subtracting this from four and a half and I can just minus that. So it's just one step, boom, you're done. So if you remember that, and if it's for two and a half, two and a half rails and styles, obviously that distance would be different. But as you're working on it, what I do is I, is I could take Take that dimension, I'll show it to you. I could do four and a half for two and a quarter, so four inch, one half, and I subtract the 13 sixteenths, which is the tenon depth. So that leaves me with three and 11 sixteenths. That distance right there takes into account the tongue times two subtracted from the rails and styles. So 16 inch 5 eighths minus 3 and 11 gives me 12 and 15 sixteenths, which as you see, that's what we have right here. So we did that all that time. Now, where can we use this again? We're gonna need it when we figure out the, the panel height, right? Do the panel height is the exact same way. If we go 23 inch, 1 16th for the height of the style, and we subtract 3 inch, 11 16th, that gives me 19 and 3 eighths, and what do you know? That's the same number that we got here. So look at how much quicker that is. Now here's the thing. Remember that when you're doing the panel height, you always got to subtract that 16th also. You can't forget that. I mean, if in this particular case, if it was the exact same size as the rails and styles and the opening was perfectly um, measured out and you had no extra space, it would, it would work. It would just make it a little hard to put in, but you're not giving the room, give, giving the material any room to move. Now, in my experience, this stuff doesn't move at all, so this would be fine to do it that way, but I like to have a little extra room just because it's easier to put things together when you have a little extra room. Um, and you know what? If your panels aren't perfectly square when you're making it up, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world. All right, so this dimension right here, we've got 16 and 5 eighths wide by 23 and... 1 16th tall, right? We subtracted an eighth from that height. So that's what we have. Now, of course, we made all these cuts over here and we routed everything. And then we came over and we made, magically, these doors are already made. So 
this is what we have. Doors clamped up. And I thought for a second that maybe I should show you guys the methods for doing this. I hope I was clear enough. If not, ask me some questions on the comments. Um, again, sometimes when I do this for a living for 20 years, it's hard for me to, you know, think what it might be like if I was just learning it. Um, and I know there's a lot of great videos out there. Um, I, I know for sure that there's a, a ton of them on rail and style joinery for doors, but you know what? Um, a lot of them, they feel, I feel like they're a little more complicated than they need to be. This is actually a really simple process. Um, you know, setting up the, the heights of these guys, the rails and style router bits. I mean, it couldn't be simpler, right? This is so easy. All you do is eyeball the first one and then you just match this up to the second, to what you just did. So this is probably the easiest thing. Getting the depth right, I mean, that couldn't be easier. All you have to do is go off the bearing with the ruler. So if you do that, all you have to do is go right up to that bearing. And I make mine a little bit in from the bearing. I don't know if you can see, but it's a, it's a tiny, tiny bit in. So when I rub this, it doesn't actually touch the bearing. It is just ever so slightly in. And what that does is it allows me to make sure that when I route it, I don't actually contact the bearing. Because when you're contacting the bearing, what it does is it, it actually pulls the wood as you're bringing it in. And here, it doesn't move at all, right? It's just a constant motion and there's no abrupt little pull like if you if the bearings out a little bit you can actually feel it uh, and then also when you pass through the same thing you can feel it and I don't like that feeling so the joint is exactly the same by the way going in deeper or whatever because they're matched um, it makes no difference whatsoever if it's a tiny space so anyway here's a really good picture of the um, detail that we were just, you know, describing in the pictures we were doing, figuring out the, um, the measurements. This tenon right here is that distance I was talking about, the 3 8 or the 7 16 whatever this is. Now, every door is going to be slightly different, but this guy right here, actually, if you can see that, that measures out at, I mean, that's just over half inch yeah that's just over a half inch that's like nine sixteenths roughly so that's a pretty big tenon now th this particular uh, style of course is a applied molding door it's different but um, yeah that guy right there is pretty big our doors I'll show you these particular ones that we just made are uh, that distance right there so you can see let me show you yeah. with the um, ruler there we go so you can see do you see that so it's not it's not three eighths it's a little over right but it's not seven sixteenths either so when I'm Times that by two, what I get is 13 sixteenths, okay? If it was three eighths, I'd get three quarters. If it was seven sixteenths, I'd get seven eighths. So I'm right in the middle. So that's the thing. You just wanna make sure that whatever you have is right for your um, dimensions, okay? So I think that's about it. I gotta take these doors out and sand all these guys um, and, you know, square them up and fit them to the openings. That's a video all in itself because fitting doors to openings is a completely different animal than making the doors. So, um, you know, like I said, I've been doing this for a long, long time and it seems like we've been doing inset doors forever. We've really never done overlay. Um, I think the only time we've ever done overlay is for people that already had kitchens or anything they wanted to add to. Um, and that's pretty much it. But, you know, inset's been pretty much it, which 
which means a lot of things are are a little different. The uh, the door styles are different. The edge profiles obviously are different. The hinges are different. The installation's way different. Overlay, you make a door, boom, slap it on, and you're done. I mean, you know, there's really not a lot to it. So it's way easier when installing a kitchen, you know? You, you could be in and out installing doors so quickly. But with inset, every single opening has to be fitted. So this is why most companies don't even bother with inset doors because it just takes too much time. But man, does it look nice. So anyways, if you guys want to see me fit doors, just uh, let me know. And I'll put a video out of that too.